Hello and welcome to another episode of Plane Reviews. You might be wondering why we're staring at the start a new game scene. That's because I recently got an SSD and installed Windows to that, and I only have two SATA cables right now, so I actually don't have my recording drive hooked up, which has all of my KSP installs except for this one, which I've just started on, and thus I'm basically starting over with things until I can get my other hard drive back. First up today, we have invalid and locked parts. Yeah, there seems to be a problem with my install that the bomb parts do not exist. I need to fix that. Well, to Anton Holman, if you'd like to send that craft again without the cluster bomb, I'd love to review it, but for some reason, whenever I try to install BD Armory, none of the bombs actually show up in game. I don't know why or how, but it just started happening. So let's get off to hopefully a better start with the Viper Mark 2.5. This is by Hugo Boz, and that is an interesting use of these parts to how you... That is an interesting use of these parts. I like that. Oh, it does have BD Armory on it, as you can see by the... Whoop. Eh. Damn it. There's pylons on the edges of the wings, so it is, it is a modded craft. It does have uh, BD Armory. I don't even know if he mentioned that on the thing. Like, you're supposed to mention what mods are on it if you send me something with mods. I don't know if he did, but I have BD Armory installed already, so that's good. And uh, actually, so did the other one. It's just the cluster bomb, for some reason, isn't installed. Looks pretty good. I'd give it a test fly, but he also sent me one preloaded with weapons. Oh, and that broke the game, so I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. Hopefully it doesn't break this time. Alright, so here we are on the runway, immediately falling over. That's not good. Plane should not do that when you load it onto the runway. Why does it do that? Look, look, look. Look. Okay. Watch it. Watch it just go back onto that side on its own. Why are you doing that, plane? You should not be doing that. What kind of missiles are these, anyhow? Amrams. Okay. Cool. Do you have any action groups set up? I didn't bother to read the thing. I probably should have. Let's take off with this extremely lopsided- Seriously, why is it leaning to one side like that? That definitely should not be happening. Like, I don't see the reason for- Oh! Oh wait! Those aren't placed evenly, are they? Are they? Well, even if they are, they aren't acting like they're placed normally- Whoa! Well, we got into the air one way. Um, yeah, those, yeah, the, your landing gear are not placed evenly. Did you place them individually? Because, you know, there's symmetry for that kind of thing. I mean, use symmetry on the rest of the craft, so you must know it's there. But yeah, those are not placed quite right. Additionally, um, I noticed that there's no, like, struts holding the back of this together, so you'll notice that it flexes as I move. As I, you know, go up and down and left and right and whatever. It flexes. And really, you probably should strut the rear of these fuel tanks to the engine, because that's just... Look at that. That's not good. Additionally, uh, there was something else I noticed that I wanted to mention. Oh yes, your landing gear really far back. Putting your landing gear further forward would also make it easier to take off with. So, I'm gonna start pushing buttons now. Don't know what I just did. Huh? Oh, I fired one of them. Bye-bye, whatever that was that I fired at. Alright, I think that was... Was that action group 3 or 4 that did that? I don't remember. Well, guess we'll find out in a minute. When I fire another one. Or fail to. Here goes nothing. I was right. There went nothing. Okay, now here goes something. That fired far too low. Oh well. Didn't even hit the launch pad. We can hit the launch pad though. Actually, let's try not to. Oh, but it's too late, it's too late, because this thing doesn't move very well. Oh. I'm not the only one that saw that sliding slowly before it disappeared, right? You guys saw that too, right? Wow, look at that. The, gra <laughs> the explosive graphic is above the ground. That's, uh... That's... That's very... <laughs> Very interesting. So next up, by Kyle Ludlam, we have a shuttle replica. I wonder if this is supposed to actually make it to space. If it is, I'm sorry, because it's not going to. I'm not going to fly it to space. It looks like it might be able to, if you flew it properly. 
interesting how it has the extra thrusters on the wing like that. It probably has instructions on how to fly it. I suppose I'll take a look. Full throttle. <laughs> Lean back and eject orange tank when empty. Yes, of course. Action group 1 fires the engines that are used after the orange tank is ejected. Action group 2 must be pressed when orange tank is ejected or the spacecraft will start backflipping. So action group 2 shuts off the main engines, I'm sure. So I have a terrible idea for how to fly this. That idea is called do a barrel roll. Except it's actually an aileron roll, but that's not really what we need to worry about right now. What we need to worry about right now is the fact that I'm just going to spin forever and see what happens. I really need to make sure that I... Okay, there we go. I'm trying to make sure I stay pretty much straight up while I'm doing this. This thing does fly pretty nicely, actually. Oh, but you know what? I just noticed why it's flying so nicely. Do you, do you see the massive stack of SAS units? That's why it's flying so nicely. I didn't even think about that when I was looking at it, but yeah. That many SAS units, no wonder it's flying well. And I'm starting to lose the ability to keep it centered. I mean, we are still going straight up, but the, the spinning is kind of... I'm going to stop spinning now. And eject those and not run into them. There we go. Okay, now it's pitching down on its own. Okay, pull back up. There we go. And we could keep flying with this booster for quite a while, I'm sure. But we're going to do... That. And we're going to do a graceful backflip. Of course, this is what it looks like from inside with our non-functional MFDs. None of those are real navigation things. And I'm going to try landing it with a heavy fuel load to see what happens. Alright, let's start flying it at normal speed. I believe now is a good time as any to roll around. This thing, this thing is very, very maneuverable. Why is it so maneuverable? Do you have like SAS wheels buried in here somewhere? I wouldn't put it past you. No, it's just uh, very maneuverable. All right, that's cool. That's cool. We're coming in a bit high and a bit to the left still. So I'm going to go ahead and accidentally hit something on my desk right now. And then turn and go ahead and glide it on in. And of course, deploy the landing gear because, you know, we might need those to stop. Also, I just noticed it has double landing gear in the front. That's kind of cool. All right. Probably should think about pulling up now. Of course, this thing pulls up really fast, so it was really easy to just be like, and stop falling. Oop. Oop. Ah, uh, that's my fault. That is not the design's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, one suggestion I'd make for this design right away after landing it is that your front landing gear should try to be as low as the rear landing gear because this is a craft that will only be landing, not taking off. And having the front gear like that makes it harder to land because the wings are up, meaning it wants to take back off, but we want it to stay down. Also, I just noticed this is clipping through there. Uh, sorry, it's just it annoys me when I see stuff like that. But yeah, otherwise, other than the fact that you're massively cheating using SAS wheels, or reaction wheels, as I really should be calling them, and also kind of the fact that this is kind of, you know, there's just like an obvious gap there where nothing's connected and it's kind of bleh, and like you could put a, a aerodynamic cone in there. That would be cool. Other than a few like little nitpicky things about the looks of it, that's that's okay though, really. I think this is a rather nice little design. It's, you know, tiny little shuttle. Cool. Next up, and also last for this episode, is Project Y, also by Kyle Ludlem. And is it supposed to be mostly embedded in the ground? I'm guessing it is, since it's a vertical vehicle that was built in the SPH for some reason. Let's go ahead and try to launch it. 
And of course it's here on the runway that it occurs to me again that I should have read the description on this thing. But uh, too late for that. I immediately notice we might have some aerodynamic problems if I try to move this thing off of center line because of the fact that the majority of the lifting surface is in front and this thing would probably flip over end over end if I tried to move it at all from this, you know, straight up profile. Is that? No, that's a clampatron. And that is a fuel tank. So this is just a crew carrier, I'm guessing, because it looks like we don't have any space here for cargo. Yes, so this must be a crew... A crew vehicle, a crew replacement, a crew explosive vehicle, I don't know. Interesting how we have just a bunch of SRBs as our first stage with no liquid fuel being used at all. I think it could be made a little more efficient by using the center stage some as well. Oh yeah, let's test if it'll flip out. Well, it didn't flip out. Now it is. Now it is. Alright. Yeah, see, that's the problem with having all of your lifting surface at the front of the vehicle. You will just flip out like that. If you pull too hard. Interesting, though, that this isn't actually flipping out too badly, and I'm actually starting to regain some control. And now we're a sideways rocket. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that engine, eject, fire up the next engine, and turn around, because this craft lets me. Ha <laughs> ha, super maneuverable space shuttle. Oh yeah. The fact that your plane even lets me do this is freaking amazing. This is hilarious, it's just like, nope, 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 turning around, going back home, nope, nope, nope. I do like the speed that I'm doing this at, because it means I don't have to time warp to get back to the space center faster. Although I'm going to have to now. Wow, this thing, um, hyper roll authority. Like, I would suggest taking these two winglets and making them no longer roll, also these two. Because when your craft rolls this much with just the tiniest tap, it makes it a little bit harder to control your roll. But that's just a nitpick. I do love the design on the back here, how there's just like batteries and uh, little monoprop tanks just stuck on the back here. I do find that design rather interesting. And of course I'm coming in for an aggressive landing with this one as well, because it turns out both your craft are really good at that. Whoa, whoa. This thing, this flies more like a fighter jet than a, than a spacecraft, which is kind of funny. Okay. Whoops, I should turn that back on. Oh, I caught the uh, rear. Oh. Wow, this thing does not want to stay on its landing gear. Oh. Oh, that's gonna... That's one way to land. That was, that was actually really fun. Alright, well, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space. That was the Vital Mark 1. That sucks. I have to go fix that now then, instead of later. Why does that not work anymore? Oh, now it works. Alright, if you're watching this, that means in about an hour, blah 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 blah. No. It probably has instructions on how to fly it. <laughs> this is KSP loading from an SSD. And now because I'm impatient, four times time acceleration.